Voronoi diagrams are a really fun and powerful tool that can be used for all kinds of purposes in generative art. To create a Voronoi diagram, you start with a set of points in a 2D plane, and then you find the region around each point consisting of the parts of the plane that are closer to that point than to any of the others. For instance, if we have just two points, our Voronoi diagram will divide the plane into two regions. One of the regions will consist of the part of the plane closest to one of the points, while the other region will consist of the rest of the plane, which is closest to the other point. These two regions will be divided by a line, and this line will fall exactly between the two points, at an angle perpendicular to the angle between them, because the points on this line are equally far away from each of the two points. If we instead have three points, our Voronoi diagram will consist of three regions, each of which will have a triangly wedge shape, though of course they're not really triangles since they extend outwards infinitely. The shapes of the regions start to get more interesting as the number of points increases. For instance, here's a Voronoi diagram of 20 points, and here's one of 200 points. In the diagrams I've shown so far, I've just been drawing lines at the boundaries between each of the regions, but there's a different way of drawing these diagrams that I generally find more aesthetically pleasing. Rather than just drawing a line at each edge, I like to take the boundary of each region and contract it towards the point that was initially used to construct that region. What I like about this way of rendering the diagrams is that it creates some nice variation in the size of the gaps between regions, whereas when you just draw lines on each of the edges, all the borders look the same. The reason Voronoi diagrams are such a useful technique is that the shapes they create can be surprisingly intricate compared to the set of points that they're created from. I created this diagram just by randomly choosing a bunch of points on the screen, and if we look at the points, then it's clear there's nothing interesting going on. But when we create a Voronoi diagram around this uninteresting set of points, we suddenly get something with a really interesting texture. The points for this diagram came from just randomly choosing points uniformly from the screen, but if we choose our points in different ways, then we can get different kinds of Voronoi diagrams. For instance, here's a set of 500 points that are mostly clustered towards the center of the screen rather than being uniformly distributed, and here's the Voronoi diagram that they produce. And here's a Voronoi diagram for another set of points, which I generated using Perla noise to control the density at different areas on the screen. The methods I've shown so far have involved placing the points that define the Voronoi diagram in a largely random manner, but you can also get cool results using more regular arrangements of points. Here's a set of points arranged to form concentric circles. The Voronoi diagram for this set of points looks like this. But if that's too regular for your tastes, and you want to reintroduce a little bit of irregularity, we can just nudge each of the points a small amount in a random direction. Here's a set of points sampled from a curve that I defined using a smooth noise algorithm, and here's the corresponding Voronoi diagram. I really like the results that you can get from using long, mostly linear arrangements of points like these, because the resulting diagram divides your space up into these thin, long regions that can look really interesting, and are pretty different from the results that you get when you use a more conventional arrangement of points. One really nice property that Voronoi diagrams have is that if you move the set of points in a smooth way, the resulting shapes will also change smoothly. This means that you can make animations with nice, smoothly changing shapes just by moving the points in your diagram in a smooth way. For instance, rather than having our points stand still, we could have each of them move around in a small circle. In the resulting diagram, each of the regions will move around and morph shape as the points move. And conveniently, this animation turns out to be a perfect loop, because the circular motion of the points means that each one will end up right back where it started at the same time, at least assuming they're all moving at the same rate. Here's an animation that uses the same idea, moving each point in a small circle, but again using a set of points clustered towards the center of the screen rather than being evenly distributed. And I've added an additional rule that says the diameter of the circles that points move in is larger for points in less dense regions. Here's the same type of animation yet again, but using Perl and noise for density rather than just making the center of the screen denser. And for one final example of this technique, here's what it looks like when applied to the concentric circle pattern from earlier. For another kind of animation technique, let's return to the idea of sampling our points from a smooth curve. Like I said before, I'm creating these curves using a special kind of smooth noise function, and I'll go into more detail about how I'm creating them in a future video. As before, we'll get our points by sampling regularly throughout this curve, which will make our Voronoi diagram look like this. We'll then animate this diagram by moving each of the points along the curve at the same rate. To close this video out, here's an animation that combines both of the animation techniques I discussed in this video. 
Each point in this diagram is rotating around a point that moves along a smooth noise curve. I've also made the colors change smoothly between each of the points to make the color palette of the animation look a bit more interesting. 